came out here this morning thinking I'll get that second coat of um, the exterior paint on my post so that way it can dry, I can go down and do the stuff with the other coat of rails and things. And I just went over, touched the pole, not even dry. 16 hours the paint has been on that post and it's still wet because it was so cold and I've even you can see the moisture mark on the deck just from the amount of moisture in the air up here overnight damn it <laughs> Well, these bits were dry, uh, so I'll be able to do top coats. Hopefully they'll dry, it's like a fine enough day. Went into my study to log on and try and apply for some sick leave that I'd taken last term that I'd forgotten to put in. I can't log into the system because the school or the department server is down for maintenance, so that's another thing can't do. But I did get contacted by a workmate who said there was a clinic more local to us than the um, vaccination centre down in Homebush that were doing Pfizer injections and he'd managed to get an appointment earlier than mine was. So I rang them, asked if they were doing Pfizer injections and they said yes. Made an appointment, happened to be I think the same day as his and perfect, it's a Saturday. And they gave me the second appointment exactly three weeks later at the exact same time so my first jab will be august 28 i think it was my second one is september 18. so i'll be fully vaccinated by mid-september which is something i'm going to be looking forward to i think so i was just here at the back of my wood storage hoping that i've got stuff in here to make pickets out of so far i've got this stuff that i'll be able to get Two out of this, two out of this, two, maybe three out of this, two, maybe three. Keeping in mind I need 50. <laughs> and I grabbed this piece and it wasn't coming out. This is a similar stuff to what I've used up top. And so I twisted it and this was coming through one of the holes. Bloody bamboo. So the bamboo's been popping up underneath my wood storage. I knew it was popping up on the other side, so there you go. But I think I've just exhausted this side because even though I've got some stuff here that would be the right dimension, it's not long enough. I need at least a metre because all of the pickets are a metre long. Well, I've been through my timber pile. I've found all of this stuff that I can strip down into 30 by 30s including this if I need to. I've still got some long boards here. There. Some of them I might even be able to get two just out of the length. So, this one here. And these here were the ones that I found around the back. So what I'm using, I'm using one of the old ones that is still a metre from here to here. I want to cut everything to a metre long first and then set up the saw to a 30mm width and just start milling and milling and milling and milling. So that's what I'll probably be doing for the next hour or so. I went up and I've moved these rails around the back of the shed so they can still dry. They've got two coats of undercoat all over. I'm just waiting for that to dry so I can start using the exterior gloss on it. I went upstairs and checked the rail. It's, it's almost dry. It was still like a little bit tacky in spots so I wanted to wait. So I'm going to start just chopping up some of this and I can run up there and do that and then come back down to do this. 
Let's see how we go. gate making all of my picket the same size so set the timber up on here turn the end to be clean slide it up this is set to one meter from the blade I've got my saw butted up against this this is clamped to the saw table that's clamped to this to make sure it stays still this is there to support it from under this side so I just trim cut trim and I got all that and in amongst that once I start milling it on the so table saw I think I've got about 60 pieces here and I was thinking I needed around 50 so I'm just going to make as many as I can and I've still got the eight in the shed that I built that I've cut from down at school so now I'll get set up for milling on the saw <laughs> <laughs> I was watching him, he was just sort of exploring around the yard and then he saw me just standing here watching and I asked him where he was and he went and got it Here's my stack of pickets. And I think I've got plenty there and I've still got the other eight in the other shed. Here's my final um, cross cuts. My little saw just powered through all of this. It was excellent. I only will actually go through that because there's still some stuff. I don't like throwing stuff out. There's still stuff in there. We can see these sort of bits. And I'll collect and restack in my wood pile.
is all my pickets, which all need to be primed and top coated somehow. <laughs> I might have to get the spray gun out for those and set them up out back. Water after five. The cold weather has gotten the better of me again. I went up to check on the post. It has one coat of the gloss exterior paint on it. And I went up to check on it to see if I could redo a second coat and it's still not completely dry. These have one coat of the gloss exterior on one face and the edges. I couldn't get a second coat on because it just won't dry enough to be able to do a second coat. I've got my pickets cut, you can just see them here. I've got 69 pickets there. I just kept cutting them just grabbed all the wood that I had there and just kept cutting them and um, I thought I'll cut up all this stuff and then I'll see what's left I had a massive that massive pile of sawdust and all the offcuts that's all gone around the back I've checked the weather app <laughs> I'm hoping this time it's completely false because it says tomorrow has a hundred percent chance of rain with a top of eight degrees which is 40 42 I think Fahrenheit. So it's going to be a cold one tomorrow. So if anything is dry, it's going to be too cold to paint. If that is dry in the morning, which I doubt, I could probably get a second coat on it, but it needs to be dry before I can go trying to attach the, that bottom rail. These need to be painted before I can attach them. Every one of those pickets needs to be painted. And I'm thinking of getting the, the spray gun out to do those I'll set them all out on a big rack down in the yard on top of them the saw horses I've got some long lengths of timber that I can lay out and set them all up on and spraying gives you good even coverage and also allows it to dry a lot quicker I think because the rolling gives a really good coverage but it takes a lot longer to dry because it's just a little bit thicker it's funny because it doesn't look like I've done a lot today but I've actually done a hell of a lot, especially with making those pickets. The one thing I did today, which um, I've heard of a couple of people say that they do this, and because I was, when I was cutting up all of the timber, when I was ripping the timber, which creates a stack more dust than any of the other processes, because there's no, dust collection on the saw as well as my big pile of dust that flies out the back of the saw that create was like all over the ground outside the very fine airborne dust just floated all the way back into here and there was a thin layer of dust on everything so I got my leaf blower and just blew the crap out of this shed I'm pretty sure I just upset it and it's just going to resettle but it doesn't look as bad as it was before I managed to sort of blow it out and blow the stuff that was on the ground out the door. <laughs> it's quite effective. I never thought of doing it before. I heard people say it on, on podcasts that that's what they do. But it, it was quite effective. Because, um, yeah, the stuff on the bench here doesn't look dusty. Yeah, very fine dust on the dr drill press, but it, not as much as it was. I'm about to go and get cleaned up for the night. And I just remembered that it's been night. And I've got that bin full of all the garden waste that needs to go up. So I'm going to go and take that up before I get out of these clothes. Anyway, guess I'll catch you on the next one day.